Good morning, church, and welcome to Monday morning, May 11th. Our reading this morning is from by Roger Owens, Becoming Who You Are in the Upper Room Disciplines. Scripture this morning is from Acts 17, 21 to 31. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new. And then Paul stood in front of the esophagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way, for I went throughout the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship. I found them among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. This I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything. Since he gave himself, he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor, he made all the nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of you, your own poets, have said, for we too are his offspring. And since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think of that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of immortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So Roger tells us that a basic tenet of the Christian faith is God's transcendence. God is utter, utterly different from creation, a truth attested to in many great hymns like Holy, 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 or Immortal, Invisible God, Only Wise. But we should never confuse transcendence with distance a point that Paul tries to make when preaching to the Athenians. Here in the birthplace of the Western philosophical tradition, the residents likely are not surprised to learn that the divine is transcendent. But it make him a shock to hear a preacher say that a transcendent God is not far away and desires to be made known. Like skeptics and seekers today, the Athenians are searchers for wisdom and truth, seekers of the divine. But they have not imagined that what they are searching for, the one idea that holds everything together, isn't an idea at all, but a divine love, closer than their very breath, the nearness of which impels their very search. The point that Paul makes is captured well by theologian Richard Lischker, who writes, God is so transcendently close, we cannot see God. And so woven into the, woven into the fiber, fiber of things that God remains hidden, like the key lost in plain view. Thus we need preachers like Paul to point out that the truth of God's nearness. Roger remembers a conversation with his spiritual director not long ago. He says, I was talking about my longing for God, my desire to become united with God's love. 
which at the moment seemed far away. And she said, you can't long for something you haven't already tasted, at least a little. We search for God because God has already come so near. Like the Athenians, we might find ourselves groping for God, but Paul assures us that our desire for God is driven by the sweet nearness of God's presence. Let us pray. O oh, ever near God, help us to sense your presence closer to us than we can ever imagine. We seek you, O oh Lord. Amen. And I chose, breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Blessings on this Monday morning. May you feel closer to God each day.